Hello everyone, I must say thanks for joining the channel and if you have not done so, please do so. I will always take you on the journey that you can do some critical reflection. My days and hours are spent really doing a lot of research, reflection and so forth. You know, I'm always consistently reflecting. Whether it be evenings or early mornings, those are my reflection spaces. But I want to say, I must tell you about a site that my daughter and I, we have set up. It's called Curriculum Edge. We have roughly over 20 applications that teachers and of course we are moving towards parents can use to enhance their, of course, children's learning. So I want to talk to you this week about health insurance and balancing efficiency with ethics. You see, there are many things that we are not taking into consideration. But when I look on AI, I just don't focus on education. I focus on all areas that are relevant to me and, of course, you. And I think it's important for me to advocate for you. So as you listen to this, I want you to consider the consequences of what's happening, what's about to happen, and what has already happened. And we need to ensure that we are ready and have the knowledge to navigate. And this one is called AI in Health Insurance, Balancing Efficiency with, of course, Ethics. Now, I want you to imagine this. You're in a minor car accident, and within the moments of that accident, your insurance app pops up onto your phone. You upload the photographs of the damage of the car. And by the time you've finished giving your statement to the police, you receive an estimate about the repair. Calculating is done by not a human adjuster, but of course, an artificial intelligence system. Now, we need to understand that this is possible. Now, because of that accident, you actually had to go to the hospital. And during that hospital visit, you realized that there was something else wrong with you. You went through a surgery after the accident. And of course, you need months of rehabilitation. But when the insurance company looks at the whole system, they inform you when you're about to get your physiotherapy and so forth, that you can't get that service. The claim has already been denied. You say, how is this possible when you actually need that to ensure that your life is okay? Because after all, you want to live a life that's independent and not getting the necessary support will not give you back your independence. Now, this is what might have happened. You see, AI is transforming health insurance, the industry that is, promising efficiency, cost saving, and streamlining decision making. But beneath the surface lies a critical question. How do insurance companies use AI in the process? And sometimes, why are people's insurance claims denied? And another question that we have to ask, at what cost? There was a recent case involving an insurance company that was using AI. According to the report, as you can see here, 90% of the claims were denied. Yes, and it is alleged that it was by an AI system. The reality is that some insurance companies, they face a lot of pressure. They need to process a lot of claims. And of course, they have started to use AI. And of course, we know that AI has a capacity to, of course, examine vast amount of data sets. The decisions they make can sometimes be faster than humans, and in many cases, or most cases. But how does it work? And what data are they using? You see, automated data review. The AI system, in this case, analyzes the claims for discrepancy, medical necessity, and, of course, policy compliance. So, therefore, you could have many things happening here. Your discrepancy, there could be a discrepancy in your claim and it's denied. Of course, if there's a discrepancy, maybe someone would have called you, but the AI is not equipped to do that. Then, of course, many people, of course, have done some fraudulent situation as it relates to insurance. So the AI has a capacity, they say, to, of course, combat that, thus reducing the cost of insurance. You know, there is insurance fraud and we know that that has been around for the longest possible time. But notwithstanding, why are you going to say someone is denied when actually they have not done anything fraudulent? A call would be good to clarify. And there is predictive analytics that is being used. AI assess risk profiles of people 
and determine the likelihood of the claim being approved or denied based on historical data. See what I'm getting at? Historical data, not data in real time, but it's using algorithmic bias data. For insurers, the technology means faster processing time, which is good. You get your claim sorted out. It lowers the administrative cost. And of course, there's greater decision-making consistency, somewhat. I say somewhat because it's not always right. It might be consistent, but not right. And that creates a lot of challenges as it relates to insurance claims. Now, AI is only fair as the data it is trained on. If the underlying data contains bias, such as prioritizing cost, saving over patient care, those biases are amplified. And here's where the crack is shown in the system. And the cracks sometimes can lead to the loss of life for individuals who really need insurance. First, there could be the denial of legitimate claims. AI may flag treatments as experimental or unnecessary based on outdated or incomplete guidance, leaving patients to shoulder the financial burden. And the next one is the lack of transparency. Many patients are not aware that AI was used to make the decision as it relates to their claims. Decisions that lack clear transparency make the appeal process frustrating because the AI information has not been passed on to the patient, so the patient has no idea why this claim was rejected. And what if you were told that AI made the decision? I would want to speak to someone who is a human, of course. And of course, we have algorithmic bias. AI might unintentionally disadvantage certain demographics if historical data reflects systematic inequality in healthcare access. And we all know who that is or what groups associated with that level. Having been born in Jamaica, lived in Jamaica, and also worked in England, the United States is the first place that I've actually had to take out health insurance. No, I believe in universal health care, and that's not political. I think that people have a right to live, and that's just my philosophy. So we need to balance all these things that we're talking about now to ensure that everyone has access. And that brings me to the point. We need to balance efficiency with ethics. There should be transparency. Patients must be informed when AI is used to make a decision about their health. It's the right thing to do. You can't just be using AI just like that and tell no one and do not explain the decision. And of course, it's important for us to do that. I think we need human oversight. AI should assist, not replace humans as it relates to their judgment. Complex cases need to be handled and reviewed by humans to avoid unjust denial. And I want to say we need to understand the need for bias auditing. And that has to do with every industry, not just in healthcare. Regular audits for AI systems must be carried out. And I did that in my 40 principles as it relates to creating an AI framework. And when you see these bias, they must be addressed and dealt with, ensuring fair outcomes for all patients. I want to say that we must harness these principles to enhance AI and to ensure that it does not erode the trust in our healthcare system. I want to close with a vision. Just think, as AI continues to shape our health service and landscape, we stand at a crossroad that we need to understand that technology is important and we should thrive to understand that technology should be aligned with humanness. That's important. We're all humans. Imagine a world where AI is not only processing claims, but also ensures that patients receive the care they deserve. A world where technology doesn't deny humanity, but reinforces it. The future of AI in health insurance is still being written. And I say still being written because we know we have a long way to go. And as insurance companies and various sectors decide to use it, they should not use it just to cut costs at the expense of humans. There must be ethical oversight. It must be a patient-centered approach as it relates to AI. And AI should not just stand by itself, but there should be human dignity associated with AI. And we must ensure that as we navigate the space, that no one is denied because of an algorithm. 
AI is for all to benefit from and not just some. That's all for now. Thanks for joining me. Remember to check out my website and, of course, Curriculum Edge. All right. Take care.